Good morning to all worshiping with us today and happy new year to all. We are but participants in this worship which Christ offers in our name to the Father through the Holy Spirit. Welcome to the gathering of God's people in this place. Let us excite one another to spirited worship as we recall all of God's blessing this past week. Our android hymn number 153, Joy to the World, first verse only. to worship based on Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The angels, the sun, moon, and shining stars. Praise the Lord who has established heaven and earth and everything in Every animal and bird, every fish and creature of the seas. Praise the Lord, every ruler and government, all people of every age and every color. Prayer of praise and adoration. Gracious and loving God, with the angels, we too sing glory to the newborn king, every marveling at the magnitude of your love for us, a love prepared to take on our flesh and be born in a humblest of circumstances. Each year, the breath of your love brings forth to us a response of praise. A response expressed and in and through worship, as we sing traditional carol, and as we hear familiar words of scripture, we praise you for your great gift of love, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We bring to birth, who bring to birth in us love for you, O God, and love for one another, accept our prayer and praises for we make or we make them in Jesus' name. Our hymn of adoration, 146, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
be seated. We confess that we are people unworthy to approach holy God, but know that Christ is our high priest interceding to, uh, to the Father for us. Prayer of confession, intro, inter, introduction. Make yourselves comfortable to think about how you dream about the future. Are your dreams slow, slow, solely about yourself and what you would like to have to make life easier? Or are they about looking for ways to make life easier for others? Let us pray. Jesus had to become like us in every respect of that. He might be merciful and faithful. These qualities form the very foundation of Jesus' life. Therefore, he was able to share human pain and human happiness, human times of testing and human joy in observing and caring about people and the beauty of the world. We think now of times when our lives lack mercy, compassion, and kindness, when we knew in our heart that this weakened our relationship with God and the other people. We think about people, adults, and young people in parts of the world who are suffering in a daily ha happening and imagine what it would be like to be in the shoes, in their shoes. Let us pause to reflect on this for a moment. Let us all pray together. Merciful God, give us care to care for others. Mercy, compassion, and kindness. So fully revealed by Jesus, strengthen us with the Holy Spirit, so that whatever we do in words and deeds, we do in the name of Jesus. Amen. Assurance of forgiveness. We hear in the reading from Hebrew that Jesus become like his brothers and sisters, us, so that he might make sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. In other words, because Jesus himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The good news, therefore, is this, that in Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Christ. Children Hymn 143, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. Please remain standing for the hymn after, after our statement of faith. Let's say this together. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God. 
who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We eagerly listen for a word from you, Lord Jesus Christ to help us in our daily life and to equip us for the mission with which you have called us. Hymn of Illumination 499, tell me the old, old story.
our prayer of illumination. Father, we now pray that you would illumine our minds more and more as we look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Open our eyes to see wondrous things in your world of truth. Open our ears to hear you, still small voice speaking to us the words of life. And open our minds and cleanse our thoughts so that your Holy Spirit may guide us into all truth. May we be in increasingly willing to submit his gentle prompting so that he may guide us into your way I, of peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The red word, the Holy Scripture, reading from Isaiah, will be done by Allison. A reading from Isaiah chapter six, chapter 63, verse 7 to 9. I will tell of the Lord's unfailing love. I praise him for all he has done for us. He has richly blessed the people of Israel because of his mercy and constant love. The Lord said, they are my people. They will not deceive me. And so he saved them from all their suffering. It was not an angel, but the Lord himself who saved them. In his love and compassion, he rescued them. He had always taken care of them in the past. The word of the Lord. Our responsive Psalm 148. Let all creation praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the highest above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all your shining stars. Praise him, your highest heaven and your water above the sky. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creature and all ocean depth, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind that do this biden, your mountain and all hills, fruits, trees and all cedar. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His plunder is above the earth and the heavens. This reading will be done by Denise. Good morning to everybody.
It was only right that God who creates and preserves all things should make Jesus perfect through suffering in order to bring many sons to share his glory. For Jesus is the one who leads them to salvation. He purifies people from their sin and both he and those who are made pure all have the same father. This is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers. He says to God, I will tell my brothers what you have done. I will praise you in their meeting. He also says, I will put my trust in God. And he also says, here I am with the children that God has given me. Since the children, as he calls them, are people of flesh and blood, Jesus himself became like them and shared their human nature. He did this so that through his death, he might destroy the devil who has the power over death. And in this way, set free those who were slaves all their lives because of the fear of death. For it is clear that it is not the angels that he helps. Instead, as the scripture says, he helps the descendants of Abraham. This means that he had to become like his brothers in every way in order to be their faithful and merciful high priest in his service to God so that the people's sins would be forgiven. And now we can help those who are tempted because he himself was tempted and suffered. The word of the Lord. The gospel will be read by Anna. The escape to Egypt. After they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph and said, Herod will be looking for the child in order to kill him. So get up, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt and stay there until I tell you to leave. Joseph got up took the child and his mother and left during the night for Egypt, where he stayed until Herod died. This was done to make come true what the Lord had said through the prophets. I called my son out of Egypt. When Herod realized that the visitors from the east had tricked him, he was furious. He gave orders to kill all the boys in, in Bethlehem and its neighborhood who were two years old and younger. This was done in accordance with what he had learned from the visitors about the time when the star had appeared. In this way, what the prophet Jeremiah had said came true. A sound is heard in Ramah, the sound of bitter weeping. Rachel is crying for her children. She refuses to, become, to be comforted for they were dead. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up, take the child and his mother and go back to the land of Israel because those who tried to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up, took the child and his mother and went back to Israel. But when Joseph heard that Archelaus had succeeded his father Herod as king of Judea, he was afraid to go there. He was given more instructions in a dream. So he went to the province of Galilee and made his home in a town named Nazareth. And so what the prophets had said came true. He will be called a Nazarene, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We will now have special music by Richard, followed by the sermon by Reverend Dr. Osbert James.
Thank you very much, Richard. We are not very many today, so I thought I'd just um, talk with you um, to give a different perspective on the scripture. The scripture that I want to focus on this morning comes from Matthew chapter 2, the gospel reading beginning with verse 13. In, in that narrative, we are told that the life of Jesus was under threat. And that God sent an angel at night to speak to Joseph in a dream. And Joseph took the baby Jesus and escaped under the cover of darkness into Egypt, which Egypt was to the south of Bethlehem, just about 60 miles. And Joseph stayed there until he was told by the angel again to return. As I look at you in the congregation, Most of you have experienced the death of a loved one. Some of you have seen your loved one struggle with a life-threatening illness for a number of years. You prayed and you asked God to intervene. But the person died anyway. Some of you your loved one died after a sudden illness. You were taken by complete surprise. And you wonder why God had not intervened. As I look at this scripture, and for the first time after reading this scripture so many times in my life, a particular perspective came to me. I asked some questions. And I'm sure those are some questions that you may have asked in your own time, in your own life. Now, we believe God to be omnipotent, isn't it? God is all-powerful. Yet, Jesus' life was under threat. If you look at the passage, when the angel spoke to Joseph, he didn't say, take Mary and the child. He said, take the child and his mother. The focus was on saving the life of Jesus. But if God is omnipotent, why didn't God just kill Herod? In other words, God, in his all-powerfulness, could have struck Herod dung and killed him in so many different ways. He could have taken Herod's life. Are you, you with me? Then why did God choose to send an angel and have Joseph, under the cover of darkness, run away into Egypt? I found myself asking this question. See, sometimes we pray and we presume to tell God how God should act. And if I were God, I would have struck Herod down, hands down. What would you have done if you were God and Herod threatened? and you knew Herod was threatening the life of your son, what would you do when you had the power to stop him? You wouldn't have taken Herod's life? Well, if I give Herod life, I could take it, right? If I'm God. So we do not understand why God does what God does. But let me dirty the water a little more. Now, if God had acted, 
then the children who were killed by Herod would not have been killed. Remember the story told us that Herod, when he couldn't get to Jesus, decided, well, I'm going to throw a dragnet and I'm going to catch all of them. So one of them must be Jesus. So all babies between six months, I guess, and two years. Now, when you first read it, you become alarmed thinking it's a very large number of babies, but Bethlehem was a small area and with its outlying villages and towns, there were probably just about 2,000 people in those days. He didn't kill girls, baby girls. He didn't kill children who were over two years old. So some scholars believe that the amount of children who were actually slaughtered was just about 20 to 25. But one child slaughtered is too many. So is God then complicit in Herod acting? In other words, if you know that a, a criminal had the potential to do great damage and you didn't stop him when you could and then he goes on a rampage and kill others, wouldn't you be responsible in some way? I'm getting you all to think. <laughs> but lest we lay the blame at God's feet, let us go back. Let's go to the book of Genesis. God created Adam and Eve, and God gave them everything they needed. He only restricted them from doing one particular thing. But they were discontented and they chose to disobey God. The point I'm going to make here is that we had two characters, two main characters in a way in this story. Jesus and Mary were minor characters at this point. But Joseph and Herod are the main characters. We're going to look at how they responded, both of them, to the situation with which they are faced. So in the Garden of Eden, the issue here was choice. This is the first day of a new year. And who we become and who we are at the end of this year will be as a result of our choices. We become our choices. Just think about this. The angel came to Joseph while he was asleep, Joseph made a choice to obey. As soon as he woke up, he began to put things in place so that he could leave. He didn't wait until tomorrow, but he went right away because he believed it was the word of God the voice of God. So Joseph chose to obey. Not only did Joseph choose to obey then, but he went to Egypt and he remained there until he was told it was time to leave. Now, I could give you a little bit more detail about Egypt, but it's not that important. Um, at the time, but let me say this to you though, at the time that Joseph went to Egypt, Egypt was under the control of the Romans. And there was a, a, a um, what you call it, uh, 
a residence or a community in Alexandria, Egypt, that was made up about one fifth of that population was Jews. So when he went down there, he probably went to Alexandria, Egypt. Now, Pharaoh, not Pharaoh, Herod, on the other hand, also had a choice. But Herod was motivated by power. Herod's action had nothing to do with God's seeming inaction. Because that's the man that Herod was. Herod had relatives killed because people liked them more than he. He had his two sons, he had two of his sons killed. And then when Herod knew he was going to die, he was sick. And he knew he was not liked by the people. You know what Herod did? He went and got a number of leading citizens, men. Brought them into the palace area, the compound. And he instructed that the, the moment he died, that these people were to be killed. You know why? He said, nobody going to mourn for me when I die. So the nation is going to be in mourning when I die. So kill all of these people so the nation will mourn. Are you getting my point? So Herod, that was the man he was. And so he made a deliberate choice. We, we listen to the news. And we hear about wars. We hear about the evil of wars. I, I looked at a picture some time ago. And they were talking about the evil of wars. And they spoke about Japanese soldiers. Using babies. For bi is this bayonet? The stuff you have at the end to train with it. So you get babies. And they had some pictures showing that. Was God responsible for that? Or was it the choice that these people made? We hear about all the atrocities that have happened in Ukraine, in Syria, and happens all the time in Africa. Who is responsible? You and I can be like any of those people when we are motivated by power, by greed, by selfishness, because that's what motivated Herod. That's what motivated Adam and Eve. They were discontented. And I believe that every sin that we, we commit has to has as part of it some degree of discontentment. So we could choose doing this year to make decisions that reflect the children that we are, the children of God. And our choices must always honor God. So in closing, you might ask me, how do I, like Joseph, know that it is God that is speaking to me? Well, I have one test for knowing whether or not it is God's voice rather than, say, voice of, you know, something else. The decision that, or uh, the activity, the action that I am prompt to make by this voice, and God speaks to us in very many ways, through scripture, through the church, through experience. My litmus test is whether or not one, 
it is going to honor God. Two, it is not selfish. And three, it is for the good or for good. You know, in, in one of the readings um, I read, when Paul was in, in jail, he said that there are a number of people who were preaching the gospel for selfish reasons. But then he says, no big deal. At least the gospel is being preached. We need to ensure that in everything that we do, that God is glorified. And as we go through this year, we need to always ask ourselves for whom we are making the decision that we are making, the choice that we are making. Is it to glorify self or is it to glorify God? Flip Wilson, American comedian, used to have a saying, the devil made me do it. Sisters and brothers, the devil may urge us, but ultimately, we have a choice to make. But please note that even if we may not see the consequence of our action right now, when we act in a particular way, we set in motion certain things. So please, as we go forth into this year, let us always choose God's way. Amen. We respond with thanksgiving through commitment of ourselves and giving tithes and offering. Hymn of response 204, thou didst leave thy throne.
oh God, we go forward into the coming year, confident of your guidance and your love binding us together. Receive these gifts and the service of our life as a sign of thanksgiving. May everything we do in words and deed reflect our gratitude for the gift of Jesus, our Savior and Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. We take our prayer to the Father, who is always willing to hear us, through Christ our High Priest and Mediator, in the power of the Holy Spirit, our enabler and guide. Do we have any family updates? Okay, it's Gina San Daniel birthday. Any other updates? Do we have any testimony this morning? Christoph. Good morning and Happy New Year. I would just like to thank God for taking me through this year safely because last year, safely, because I see a lot of people my age who don't know who God is. And I'm very thankful that I have the opportunity to worship him. And I hope that this coming year, a lot more young people will come to Christ. Thank you. Let us pray, and we will follow that by the Lord's Prayer. Gracious and merciful God, as we come before you today, have mercy on us. We are living in a world that is full of war, greed, and even seems to be roaming our planet. Many are asking where God is, and when we want to pray, it seems very confusing to how we pray. Father Lord, I put this planet, Earth, and its people, every government, every organization, every source of earthly power under your hand to guide them and lead them to make the right decisions. I lift before you our elderly who seems to be struggling with loneliness and lack of care, the sick among us, the brokenhearted, and the broken family. Let us remember our refugees who are facing the freezing weather and the women who are being abused in every way. I pray for our church members who are here with us today and those who are listening through our social media. I pray for our minister and his family. I pray, Lord, your Holy Spirit will fill this place and cover us all with your power. I pray that you will lead each and every one of us to move forward with confidence that you are in control. Bless our life with peace that we may be able to show everyone who comes to our life what it is to follow you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
we go having heard your word to us, make a difference in our community and the world. Our bidding hymn 139, Hark the Herald Angel Sings. May the love of God bless you and keep you. The mercy and faithfulness of Jesus Christ be born in your hearts and the Holy Spirit create and bring dreams to reality in your lives. And now may God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with us now and forevermore. If through the fellowship, the liturgy, the hymns, the reading of scripture, the gospel, special music, or the sermon, God has spoken to you and you desire to make a profession of faith, recommitment of life, become a member of this congregation, make a pledge or just a talk, please contact the minister or your elder to arrange an appointment. Announcement, 
Because of McDonald College 60th anniversary in January 23rd, our joint service will be at McDonald College on the 22nd of January, rather than on the 29th. As typically scheduled, the service will be at 10 a.m. and we are urging all Presbyterian to attend to demonstrate interest in the ownership of our school we founded 60 years ago. Communion service, Sunday the 8th of January, 2023. Any other announcement? Uh, the session would meet on Tuesday at 5 p.m. here at this church. Morning. Just want to say there's a lot of respiratory illness around. There's a lot of COVID and, and about two or three other respiratory viruses. I think we need to have a spell again of masks and avoiding close contact. Any other announcement? We will sing our recessional. Let there be peace on earth. You may stand. We will avoid touching hands. We will just greet each other. yourself made in the image of God and may the peace of God be with you always have a blessed week everyone and peace everybody